One of the most cliché prequel criticisms is the introduction of Metachlorians. Introduced in The Phantom Menace, Metachlorians have long been misinterpreted. Metachlorians have been so long ridiculed by prequel haters that nowadays none of them stop to think what is actually wrong with them. In this video, I aim to clearly explain Metachlorians, what role they play in the universe, and how they coincide with the Force, as well as disputing the reasons people hate Metachlorians. This is a pseudo-sequel of sorts to my How the Force Actually Works video. So go watch that video for more context if you wish to properly understand how the Force works. Since I didn't really discuss Metachlorians, I will discuss it here, because there's a lot to clear up. Since the dialogue from both the prequels and the original trilogy are misinterpreted. Now, with that being said, the most basic definitions of what Metachlorians contribute to Star Wars lore are a means of measuring Force sensitivity. What does that mean? It means Metachlorians determine how naturally strong one is with the Force. People across the galaxy differ in natural connection to the Force, Metachlorians aren't the Force. They're a means of measuring Force sensitivity in an individual. This does not contradict anything in the original trilogy. George Lucas had Metachlorians on the drawing board since the early days of Star Wars, and those who criticize Metachlorians criticize them for ulterior reasons. For example, J.J. Abrams in a Slash Film interview believed that when he was a kid that the Force is something that anyone could just reach out to and believe in. He misinterpreted the dialogue set in the original trilogy. Let's look at the time before Metachlorians were directly introduced. What does Obi-Wan say to Luke in A New Hope? The Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. I think what happened is that J.J. did not analyze the dialogue carefully. He seemed to believe that the Force is created by all living things and binds the universe together, and that automatically means that anyone can use the Force. No! The Force is an energy field created by all living things. The Force is in everyone, but that does not mean that everyone can use the Force directly. Let me explain. Everyone has the Force in them, and the Force is much like nature itself. It's intertwined with everything in the universe, but Force sensitivity varies by person. Let's take two random characters, Anakin Skywalker and Han Solo. I think it's safe to say that Han Solo is not Force sensitive, but still has the Force in him. But he's not one who would be considered Force sensitive. Anakin was the opposite. He was naturally powerful and strong with the Force. The connection with the Force can differ with every person, but you do at least have a connection to the Force. It's just that the average person cannot harness the power of the Force. Now, this is where I wanted to talk about why people hate Metachlorians. After analysis, it seems that all who hate Metachlorians hate them because it ruins their preconceived fantasy when they were kids that anyone could just use the Force, and that it supposedly made everyone feel special, and that they wouldn't be judged in the Star Wars universe, they just had to believe. But here's the thing though, that's just an idea. It's not actually something in the universe. It's just what people imagined, but it's not actually something that exists in Star Wars. The moral that everyone is special in Star Wars is a really bad lesson to be teaching children. And it doesn't match reality, and it's not a concept that ever existed in Star Wars. It was never a message the films actually promoted or intended. It's just something people took from the movies. A better lesson to teach people is that we're all born with certain advantages and disadvantages, and it's how we overcome our disadvantages that makes us great. Just by watching the original Star Wars movies and assessing certain aliens, it's clear that the galaxy is full of species that are stronger and smarter than others. So the Star Wars universe obviously does not have this mentality that people who perceive this in the films did. Let's talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi was quite an overachieving Jedi. He had a slightly above average connection compared to other Jedi accepted in the Order, but his dedication and hard-working nature was what made him great, not his natural talent. Let's equate this to musicians. Some can play instruments and write songs with ease, and others need to work hard at it, 
and study endlessly. That's just how life works. Natural talent versus dedication and experience is as much as a thing in Star Wars as it is in the real world. And it's a much, much better lesson to teach people than everyone, especially if you just believe. Because that lesson will get you nowhere in life. How this relates to metachlorians is that metachlorians are basically the measurement of people's natural talent in the Force. But metachlorians are not the Force itself. You could say they're directly connected to the Force since they're what give people Force sensitivity, but the Force itself, as I've mentioned before, is still mysterious. Perhaps it might have been easier and simpler to just have the characters sense the force within someone and not as much in others. And maybe the very specifics could have been delegated to a book. But as it exists, Metachlorians do not break Star Wars canon. They exist because there needed to be an explanation for why the height of its power, the Jedi Order could not just recruit anyone they wanted. The Force, as I've mentioned before, is like a self-conscious being. And what was introduced in the prequel trilogy was that the Force could choose you, not the other way around. So hopefully, I've explained what Metachlorians are, and why they're not a retcon, or something that doesn't fit in the universe, as those who don't like them impose their own headcanon, which in itself isn't actual Star Wars canon, because Star Wars is reflective of the guy who made it, George Lucas. Now, there is a question that relates to Metachlorians and the story in play. It's been asked why the Jedi didn't test the Senate's Metachlorian count, and it's been said that it ruins Metachlorians because the blood test would have been very helpful in determining the identity of the Sith Lord. There's many things in the films that can be inferred to dismiss this. First things first, Look at the size of the Galactic Senate. There's so many Senators and Representatives that keeping track of their sensitivity in the Force individually would be near impossible. They'd have to check the blood of tens of thousands of representatives, if not more people. I imagine that it would be hard to keep track of every person tested. Plus, it would be super prone to manipulation. I imagine if Palpatine ever did this test, along with the rest of the Senate, he would just take control of the test and corrupt the results, presenting himself and his allies as average compared to everyone else in the galaxy. Plus, he would probably misdirect at that which he does the entire prequel trilogy. That's who Palpatine is, a master manipulator. As well as this, I doubt Palpatine is the only Force-sensitive individual in the Senate. I imagine there would be plenty of naturally powerful aliens as well. And there's also the possibility that the Senate could just refuse the test. The Jedi serve the Republic, not the other way around. Those are the likely reasons why testing the Senate's Metachlorian count never materialized. It would have been impractical, long, and prone to manipulation. Plus, we have to acknowledge that the Jedi doubted Count Dooku's words, and on top of that, they needed direct proof that Palpatine was the Sith Lord, and that it meant something. Being a Sith wasn't illegal. The law that condemned the Sith wouldn't have been enforced for a thousand years at that point. The Clone Wars, on top of that, was meant to serve as a distraction for the Jedi, where they would be wiped out in advance, and the Jedi still around when it was time to end it, would be executed by Order 66. People don't seem to acknowledge that the Jedi were distracted by the war, and they didn't have the foresight to see what was going to happen. So why did the Jedi Order not have foresight and not sense the Sith Lord in the same building as them, in direct contact with them for decades? Well, that's probably a discussion for another time. Prequel hate is one big rabbit hole of criticisms, and it takes time to dispute all of them. Because the prequels as nuanced films have a lot of things in them that people just sleep on, and even if you answer one question, they just come up with five more, and while it can be explained, it takes time to answer five questions in a way that puts down any and all retorts. So that is my extensive explanation on Metachlorians. They work just fine, Deal with it. I'm JJ Plagiarisms, and until next time, what are stories with mystery boxes? Under the mountain.